Hey guys, it's Will from Tested. And it's Norm from Tested. Norm, there's a whole passel of cameras sitting here on the table and in front of us. And I'm going to talk about all of them. Okay. But uh, more specifically, this one I have in front of me right now, which I'll show through this camera. Hey, you brought this to South by Southwest with you. I did. I tested it all at South by Southwest. Uh, this is Sony's A7 uh, mirrorless camera, and we'll explain what all of those terms mean in just a moment. Um, it's a camera they released late last year. Mm -hmm. It's very exciting in the photographer community. We saw it at CES. We did also see it at CES, and uh, I got the chance to use it because I rented it from Borrow Lenses. They gave us a free rental with the lens, um, so thank them for that. Thanks, guys. Um, and I've been having a lot of fun with it. So I want to talk about my shooting experience with well, it. Well, first we should talk about what it, what it is. So you said it's a mirrorless camera. It looks like more, it looks a little closer to your big Canon, though, than, say, my Nexus 5N or your Nexus 5R. Yeah. Uh, any X5R, sorry. Oh, yeah. So right now, my pr primary camera is this guy right here. That's it's a my, lot of camera. It is. And this is actually a relatively small camera in the uh, world of full-frame cameras. This is the Canon 6D. I bought this uh, a little over a year ago. And one of the reasons I bought it is because it has a full-frame sensor. So when you talk about digital cameras, we talked about this before, mm -hmm. uh, what matters isn't uh, there's no film that goes through it. It's the sensor size. So if I pop open the lens here uh, in my Canon camera, you can that. see that um, it looks like the same size well, as a piece of 35 millimeter film. Yeah, there's actually basically. a mirror there, yeah. but if you can see the, through the mirror, there's actually the sensor. It's the same size as a piece of 35 millimeter film. That's what full frame means. Yes, and I bought the 6D here because it was at the time the smallest, one of the smallest full frame uh, cameras you could buy. You could mm -hmm. buy in this this body here. If you look at Canon's 5D Mark III, for example, or even a Nikon uh, D600, uh, they're massive. They're, they're, it's uh, a lot bigger. They're professional cameras, and they're designed. Uh, a lot of times, even for people who aren't even necessarily shooting sports or stuff like that, but for people who are doing portraiture and stuff like that, right? We want a lot of image quality. Yeah. Um, and before that, I was using this camera. This is uh, another Sony camera. It's mm -hmm. the NEX 5R. And this is a mirrorless camera. So the big difference between this camera and the Canon camera, or what, like a DSLR and Rebel. Anything that has SLR in it, mm -hmm. basically. Is like you saw that there was a mirror in that camera in front of the sensor. There is no mirror here. I'm going to pop the lens off, and you can see uh, that's the sensor. Oh right my there. god, it's naked. It's naked. It's all right. Uh, the, the photons go in straight right there. It uh -huh. gets processed and then turns into a, a JPEG or a RAW photo. So the only reason that mirror is in your SLR is to reflect light up into the viewfinder. The way the way that works, it's the way it's worked for film cameras for for decades. The mirror, the, the that mirror reflects light off of the lens mm -hmm. up into the viewfinder. You see exactly what's going to get put on the film, more or less. And then when you press the button to take the picture, the mirror flips up out of the way. The shutter opens, the shutter closes, and the mirror flips back down. Right. If you can see right now in the Canon camera. Uh, that's an optical viewfinder where you, you can see in real time what's, what's coming through what's coming through the lens. Um, it's going to be out of focus because the shot's yeah. far away and, and then we're not focusing. That mirror flips up when I press the shutter, mm -hmm. and there is a sensor behind here that captures that image. Right. Uh, and there are advantages to that, um, but the big disadvantage is that the size because of the mirror, the, the your pentagram mirror system. Um, it requires a relatively large camera and, compared to like a pocket camera. And there's a little bit of a speed speed thing to it. You know, that that mirror does take time to get up out of the way. Um, so, but, but the reason you use it is because the viewfinder, the optical viewfinder, is going to be better in in edge scenarios than say using a screen, right? You, like you, dark you, in dark rooms and stuff like that. It's easier to see through with your eyes. Yeah, you, you're seeing exactly the, the light coming through from the scene is exactly what your eyes are going to see. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no delay in that response time. You're getting infinite fidelity, basically. No processing, um, no resolution yep. issues. Um, but. Uh, a lot of people want size. Size is very important because I can't mm -hmm. take this to a lot of places. And uh, these days, I mean, we went to an event where people said no cameras that look like DSLRs, mm -hmm. and this could not go in. Uh, but this camera, you're never going to fit that in your pocket, and you're never going to. You need this. a you need a strap or something for that, or you're going to carry it all day yes, long, ever in your pocket. Uh, so this, which was announced last year, is the mm -hmm. Sony A7, and this is a mirrorless camera, much like their NEX camera, mm -hmm. which the NEX line no longer exists. It's all the Alpha line now. And, but this is actually a full-frame camera. So I'm going to pop off the lens here. Shall I open your other one so we can compare? Yes. And as you can tell... That is a lot more sensor in there. A lot more sensor on the A7 than on this NEX 5R. And uh, previously in the NEX line, you had the NEX 3, the 5, there was a 6 and a 7. Mm -hmm. um, and this is replacing that high end with this NEX Ace, or this a7. So instead of having um, instead of having high end 
any X cameras that use an APS-C sensor size, the smaller sensor size. There, there still would be those, There's still, obviously. Um, but this is the new high-end for yeah. mirrorless cameras. Super high-end. On Sony's side, at least. And uh, Sony has two models of this. There's the A7 and A7R. I okay. often choose the uh, the A7. Uh, it was a more reasonably priced one, $1,700 for the body, uh, which is a lot. It's a lot. It's, I mean, these cameras my, were $500, $600. Yeah, my 5R was 600 bucks. That's yes. insane. Uh, when you get into the full-frame sensor size, that's just what they cost. Okay. Uh, when I bought this, the Canon, it was $2,000 for the body. It's one of those situations where, just like an LCD panel, to make a larger panel, making a larger sensor gets more and more expensive because it's, mm -hmm. it's harder to find pieces of silicon with no bad pixels or whatever, yes. is what we've been told. So Sony makes excellent camera sensors. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at Nikon's, some of Nikon's full-frame cameras, they actually use Sony sensors. I, Apple uses, or has mm -hmm. in the past, used Sony sensors yes. for the iPhone. And so Sony's done a great job, uh, and, and since they've had a lot of success with these, this mirrorless camera line, mm -hmm. they've incorporated a lot of these features into the A7. So I'm going to run down the specs a little bit. There's a 24 megapixel sensor in the okay. A7, uh, which is higher than, for example, the 60s 20 megapixel sensor. Does that mean that the the size of the pixels are going to... Are that's slightly a, smaller. Slightly smaller than yes. on the APS-C sensor, yes. right? Okay. Uh, there's more pixels. More of them, even though it's a bigger More space. buckets okay. uh, of pixels. Um, but the biggest thing is the weight. So this clearly looks a lot smaller than this, even though I have a big lens on this. In terms of the sheer, just the body, mm -hmm. lens notwithstanding, this is about 470 grams versus 750 grams. What's that in Altoid tins and or English Less imperial than a, weight? A, a pound. Okay. It's a pound. Okay. Uh, we're talking about one pound for the camera body. That's light. Right. That's very light. And this... Especially when you're talking, in the world of full frame sensors, mm -hmm. it's very light. In point and shoots, it's a, it's a ton. And it is considerably heavier and larger than your NEX5 here. Mm -hmm. Like This is pocketable. I wouldn't call this pocketable. That's it, something you might put in your, your jacket pocket if yeah, you have a big a, jacket. A big jacket, a trench coat pocket, yeah. but it's not going to fit you know, in your coat, your, your, your uh, shoulder, your uh, chest pocket, mm -hmm. your breast pocket. Um, but it's still walk around. I could walk all, I did walk around all day with this in hand with no camera strap at all and not fatiguing at all, and which well, is you, tremendous. And it, and it's a size camera. It's a size camera that you could put in, say, your messenger bag and carry with you everywhere you go yeah, without noticing. Just like the, I mean, the five N. Yes. I do that all the time. Right. I couldn't share this camera with my laptop or iPad in a messenger bag comfortably. Right. Uh, this can fit into a, just a shoulder bag, no okay. problem at all. Okay. Um, it is a high end camera, so you have all your uh, physical buttons and all all your settings. So if you look back at the camera, I'm going to show you on the top here. You have your PASM dial. You know, your Priorities, aperture, aperture shutter, priority, shutter priority, manual, full manual. Okay. I'll put it to full manual for now. Um, I do like you have two dials here. They're a little tough to see, but they're a black dial here mm -hmm. and one here. Ergonomic wise, the one here, which is for uh, for your shutter, is I, easier to access. I assume that's programmable or no? It's not programmable. Oh, okay, so it's always shutter. This one's always shutter unless you're shooting in aperture mode, then okay. it's going to be aperture. Uh, this is your aperture. So I'm sh you can see that's 2.8. Um, so I, I do. I, I, sorry, I'm going to ask a dumb photo mm -hmm. question. I assume at this point most people set their aperture based on the kind of depth of field they want, and then are adjusting yes. shutter to suit depth of field they want and how much light they need for a certain scene. Okay. Um, and we'll talk about ISO in a second because th this can shoot really nice photos in the dark. Okay. Um, and then you have a manual uh, exposure compensation dial here. Um, if you're shooting in any priority mode, you can actually see on the bottom here that goes down. I, I'm actually not very used to a manual um, exposure compensation. Like having, having a physical knob. Like having a physical it. knob. Uh, on my camera, on most Canon camera and Nikon cameras, you see that that's exposure comp, and most cameras you hold down and then ro rotate the, the dial it. there for that. So having this physical knob for exposure compensation was really interesting and, um, and pretty pretty fun to use. What, I'm gonna set this to zero. What right does now. exposure compensation do? Uh, it tells the camera that you can underexpose and so it can capture at a faster shutter speed. You don't need to have a, a normal exposure. So it says it basically says, hey I'm okay. I'm okay I'm with okay this being fixing darker, this in Photoshop later. Or or, or Lightroom yes, or whatever. Or overexposing. Okay. If you want to force overexpose you can put up to plus three stops. Okay. So for example I'm at plus three right now and that's real bright. It's real bright. And if I take a photo, it's going to be really, really bright. Um, it's just t taking that processing. Typically, you're going to want to set it a couple of stops, a couple of notches under. Under some under people do exposed. over okay. and correct for over compensation. Okay. If you're shooting raw, it, it, it's up to your workflow. Um, you do have an LCD screen here. Okay. Uh, that's a three-inch LCD. Uh, it looks real nice. Um, it, it's not a touchscreen. Is it I high resolution? Like. Uh, they say 1.4 million dots. Um, and, and, and that's okay. Like so I mean, divided by three? 
Uh, not or really. Is Depends. a pixel a dot in this case? Yeah, it's, it, dots are like pixels. It's about a. It, it's about uh, 800, 600, I think. Okay. Uh, for this screen, though, screen size, though, it's it's totally great. How, how does it handle in the in the bright sun outside? I, like I, one of the things I find about my NEX mm -hmm. is that I have to, in order to use it when it's sunny out, I have to crank it into this daylight mode that yeah. then washes out all the color, and makes it really hard to use. Not great. Okay. Not great in the sun, but that's okay. Um, and the LCD does articulate, so I like that. It has it that, does, that up it and does down. tilt down, so you can shoot, you know, shoot from high above. Or you can shoot from the, the waist. I mean, if you're, if you're taking pictures of dogs or small children, that ability to fold the, the screen straight up and, sh and stoop down low is really great. Very useful. Um, and then also, it has uh, a digital viewfinder. So uh, the previous NEX cameras, uh, the high-end ones, mm -hmm. the 7 and the 6, had this. And this is basically the same one. Is it, uh, is, it was an accessory for some of the other models, yes. right? Yes. You could okay. also buy it as an accessory. For example, you could uh, buy it for the 5 and slot it on top of here. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, 2.4 million dots, basically 1024 by 768. So higher resolution higher than the resolution. back screen. And, um, and, but it displays the exact same information. So uh, there's actually a proximity sensor over here, which I think is a little too sensitive for my taste. But if you put your head up to here, and I'm just gonna block the proximity sensor to show you what happens on top, then everything that you see on, that you would see on the screen, and you can mm -hmm. configure this so you, can, you don't have to see all that information, pops up on that screen. And, and by everything you mean, like if you have the shooting grid, the kind of thing that helps you figure, mm -hmm. figure out where your lines are, if you have a level, if yes. you have your aperture, shutter, ISO, you all can that even information. review images. So if I press play, and I'm reviewing a photo we just took, and it's in bright, in bright mm -hmm. daylight. And I want to review it. In, you know, I can actually review it in here as well. Did you have trouble using it with your glasses on? Uh, not so much trouble activating my glasses on. I thought it was too sensitive when I was shooting low or getting it close mm. to my chest. It would uh, activate, and I wouldn't be able to see uh, the screen on the, the articulating the screen. I didn't spend that much time with it, but but even the few minutes that I did, I I found I had to get it right up and actually touch my glasses, which is something that makes me a little bit crazy. Um, just because I don't like having smudges on my glasses. But anyway, um, so so that's your screen. Yes, and then there are a bunch of other buttons on the back. D did you actually use the viewfinder? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Y okay. Yes, and using a, a digital viewfinder is very different from using an optical viewfinder. You have to be more aware that there uh, there could be a slight delay in the processing. I didn't, like, what I usually do for the tests is I, I put my eyes here and I move it real fast back and forth mm -hmm. just to see if there's any, like, motion blur or lag. Um, and there isn't. Uh, we're talking what a couple of milliseconds probably at most. Very, very, very okay. slight. It's not like using you know, for example, like the Oculus or something. You're not going to get right. nausea looking through the viewfinder, this digital viewfinder. But I did think that the clarity was not as nice as the optical. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's, I think that's going to continue to be the case for Absolutely. the foreseeable future, right? Right. But you do have things like your peaking focus for your focus assist stuff that does help. So, so, you, so you do have the benefits. I mean, when you said it's essentially the same screen that you have on the back of your NEX or on the back of the A7, it, it, like that does mean you get the benefits of the digital assist. So you do get the peaking. Mm -hmm. And and uh, does it work in your shooting video as well? Works in shooting video okay. as well. Um, so the other buttons in the back I want to show real quickly. There are a ton of buttons here. Uh, you have a dial here that changes your ISO. I have the auto ISO, which you can set a minimum and maximum does uh, it, auto ISO. Does it, when you have it uh, when you're setting manual ISO, does it give you more gradation than the yes. NEX line does? Because one of the things that frustrates me with that is you have to. It's basically 100, 200, 400, 800, no, you get, and you can't do 125 or 175 or whatever. So there's a bit, a bit of controversy about that because uh, the way ISO is processed with cameras, mm -hmm. a lot. Some people think that you having that doubling of ISO is all you need. Um, with when it's you're in between ISOs. Actually, the camera's doing some some tricks that you actually lose image quality with. Oh, interesting. Um, okay. So it, sticking with it, the auto ISO is totally fine. Okay. Uh, the one problem with auto ISO, there's some image quality, some 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 quirks with auto ISO. I'll talk about in a second when we okay. talk about image quality. Um, but the big thing is the lens ecosystem. So because this is a full frame camera, mm -hmm. um, you actually have to use full frame lenses with it. Uh, just because this is an E mount lens camera. And it came with you know this zoom lens, and that but that's an E mount lens camera too. Basically an E mount. So you can put like, the same lenses on. You, like could. all my old NEX lenses are going to work on this. They will technically work, uh, but it's not going to get you the full image quality oh. um, because this lens was made for a crop sensor. So it focuses on a tighter area than the full frame lens does. Yes. Okay. So while this will fit on here. And it's always hard to find the dots when you're doing this on camera. Just if you can see, uh, 
in the viewfinder, there's actually a vignette, a circle mm -hmm. around. I can actually change the display so that's all you see. So this is what this lens is doing is just focusing a tiny, uh, focusing on a circle in the center of the lens, basically. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I assume that the camera is smart enough to know that that lens is on here and it'll it'll adjust. Yes. Yeah, so in the menu setting, uh, which I'll show you right now, you can actually uh, have, have it, menus. there's a lot of menus. Um, you can actually change it to uh, to auto change. Okay. And so now I don't see the vignetting, but actually crop them down in size. And when this saves the image, instead of saving a 24 megapixel image, it'll actually just save a 10 megapixel image. Because okay. it just crops automatically for you. I think if you're going to be using a, uh, a APS-C lens, you're going to shoot with the full, with the full vignetting and crop yourself yeah. um, and, and not have auto crop for you unless you're sending it to your phone or something. OK. Um, OK. So. Uh, this works, how, what's the autofocus situation on this camera? Well, I'm talking about the lens ecosystem. Okay. Finish, finish with okay, that. Sorry. So, so you can't use your old E-mount e lenses. Mm -hmm. And what Sony is calling for this, uh, this uh, mount is an FE mount, uh, the full frame E-mount lens. And okay. they've announced this camera with five lenses to start. Uh, there is a kit lens you but, can buy this camera with, the, which so is a zoom lens. Full, f five lenses is a pretty small number. That's of very lenses. small. Yeah, I mean um, even the even the the E mount uh, APS C lenses, there's probably twenty of them. Or right, but it took now, a right? while to get to that many. Mm, of course. Right, and and by the time, I mean this is a, an ecosystem that Sony says they're committed to, and they've promised by 2015 uh, 15 lenses. And they have a good record at this point. Uh, I mean, of if you look if lenses. you look at how they've worked over the A the original A series cameras. Yes through the e -mount, the original e-mount to here. Like, I, I feel like they're, if they say they're going to back it, then they're going to back they it. They will. And um, the one I, I rented for this camera isn't the kit lens. The kit lens is a zoom lens. I wanted the smallest lens, physically smallest lens possible. Um, and that actually turned out to be the 35 millimeter. So you were trying to get a full frame pocket camera, basically. That's what I was trying to get okay. uh, with interchangeable lens. So this looks like a Zeiss 35 mil. And they're working with Zeiss for many of their lenses to start. And this is a Zeiss F2.8 FE mount, mm -hmm. a 35 millimeter. And uh, I thought it was a great lens. It's a $800 lens if you buy it, and which is reasonable for a Zeiss lens. Um, if you look at, at the Canon line for comparable 2835, it would be much cheaper. Mm -hmm. um, but the Zeiss optics are very nice. OK. Um, and then uh, you, you asked about autofocus. Well, uh, hold on. Let's see. Are there Where are the holes in the lens lineup right now? Is there a good, decent like 8200 zoom, something like that? There, there's a 200 zoom. There is a 24 to 70 f4, which we saw at CES. Then f that's the kit lens? That is not. The kit oh. lens is a 35 to 5.6, and oh, it's 28 to 70. So the 2470 is a fixed, fixed, fixed aperture? Fixed aperture, which is tougher to do. Yeah. Um, and also, they want to get it real small. Okay. And so I think they're going to have trouble getting a 2470 2.8 uh, cuz a 2470 like, 2.8 for the Canon is that big yeah. and getting the optics down to something that'll fit on this camera is going to be a, an optical challenge. Do you feel like because this camera is a little bit smaller and they want the smaller lenses you're like are you sacrificing anything cuz you have less glass on these cameras or you're not, does it really not matter? At this you're, point? you're not sacrificing stuff. I mean, you can just like pancake lenses mm -hmm. um, the glass is good. Uh, it's all about the arrangement of the glass. Okay. Um, and this is, uh, in terms of the Zeiss lenses, the prime ones, there's a 35 2 8, and then I think there's a 55 or 50. Um, a, a nice 50 millimeter lens with a full frame camera is a glorious yeah. thing. There's a there's a 50 mil, uh, I believe it's a 1 8, and it's actually pretty big. Okay. Um, but I chose a 35 because it's it's the smallest physical okay. one. Yeah. Um, so I shot a ton of photos with this. Okay. And so I do want to talk about the shooting experience. Um, I mean, ultimately, that's what matters. The, the quality of the photos and how easy it is to make the photos good is, is what matters, yeah. right? So actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in this HDMI cable, which is nice. It comes with a micro HDMI out. And it'll actually uh, let you see uh, exactly what I'm seeing. Oh, um, hey, there I there am. There it goes. Hello. There you go. Um, so this is your basic uh, viewfinder menu. Whether whether you're looking at the uh, LCD screen or you're looking through the digital viewfinder, uh, this is basically what you're seeing. I can I can point it toward oh, you, man. and uh, you can see, even see the focus points. Uh, in terms of the focus focusing system, it uses a hybrid focusing system, uh, which means there are contrast detect points and um, phase detect points. And if you see in the middle, there's actually that that bracket you see mm -hmm. right in the middle. Uh, focusing on the center, everything in the middle of that bracket is where all the phase detect uh, auto auto text uh, okay. autofocus points are. So explain what phase detect is for people like me who don't know. So um, 
In ter- con- it's better to explain it in terms of the contrast detect. Okay. Uh, with mirrorless camera systems, most of them when they started, they use contrast-based ones because it looked at the image and it looks at the edges and tries to calculate where the edges are. So it's essentially where- saying, look, this is this is the edge of my head back mm-hmm. here. It's dark here and it's a little bit lighter over here. That's a good place to focus. Right. And then the phase okay. detect, it uses an optical system to, to, te- to figure that out. And and does it do the same? It's looking for differences in the image or is it differences actually using? It, without processing the image first. Okay. Um, and the peaking comes in, which I, you can't actually see in here. Uh, you may with not be the, passing that out. With yeah, it doesn't pass that out. Comes in with the uh, contrast-based system. Okay. There's and the peaking, the right peaking is just a tool to let you see yes. more accurately what's in focus in the right. live view. Right. So there are a couple different modes. I can okay. cycle through the view modes. You can have just just your your settings. There's even like a little a gyroscope on the inside for cool. your horizon. Um, and then uh, the menu system. So okay. I press the menu, and they actually, uh, Sony changed the menu system a bunch. In the old NEX line, it had this weird uh, six tile menu system. It wasn't great. And now you're back to a more traditional, um, kind of like a folder based uh, hierarchy. Did, did they do a, like, one of the things that drove, drives me crazy about the NEX is that color, that, like, there's three settings that have camera stuff, like things that pertain to how I shoot photos, Me, like focus mode, color, white balance. Stuff like that, and it's spread across brightness and color, camera, and um, something else. Setup sure, or yeah. Something in, like the, that. in the in the NX line, yeah. And here you can actually there's a function button that can hit, and it'll give me quick access oh. to a bunch of things. For example, like the kind of things you use when you're when you're trying to shoot yes. outside in the field. For example, focus area. If I just wanted center focus, which I like using, then. That's a quick change it, right there. It seems like the focus is a lot faster than on my NES. It's very fast. The focus is very, very fast. Um, is that comparable to the to the, to the higher-end NEX cameras, like yes. the Next 7? Okay. Yes, and that's a combination of the hybrid focus system plus the processor, the new um, Bions, whatever okay. they're called, uh, the processor that's in this camera. Um, so the shooting experience, I thought, was was really nice. And you can tell the responsiveness is, yeah. is, is very fast when, you're, when I'm piping through just the, the HDMI out. Um, and I use the, uh, the DMF fo- focusing mode, which you can see on the right, it says DMF. That means that it, I can focus on something first, okay. and then change my focus manually. Use the focus we'll, ring. We use the focus ring on, on the lens here, um, uh, while holding the shutter button down. Does that limit a lot of features? Like, um, like, like on the NEX, when you're shooting like that, if you use DMF, it turns off things like face recognition and smile shutter and all the... Yeah, yeah, I mean, a lot never, of that stuff's kind of dopey that you don't want to use. That's dopey, yeah. Okay. You never want to use that stuff. Never, not really anyway. Smile yeah. detection. Oh, there you go. Uh, this does shoot at 5, uh, 5 FPS. Okay. That's uh, speed priority or 2.5 FPS. That's if you just press the button down while yeah. you're shooting, shooting photos. And we can review photos uh, through the system as well. I think there you okay, go. There we go. That's oh. a little blur. I don't think I uh, trash yeah, that's those. a little blurry. That's yeah, not good. Yeah, quarter quarter second shutter speed is. So you the, notice there, uh, the ISO there. is set to uh, to fifty. Is that because you had rolled the knob when you were showing I us had how you accidentally uh, rolled the knob, and that was mm. that's one of my gripes with it because uh, the ISO is set with the the wheel in the back, and we go back to the shoulder cam here. And that wheel in the back is also your D pad, right? Yeah, there's a D pad here for display. Yeah, but because. The ISO is change here, and I have it set to ISO. It's auto ISO. Uh, it's very easy to shift that to 50, which will mm. screw you up. Can you program? Now you said some of the knobs you can can't program. Is that something you can set you to something else as well? Change anything else? Oh, that's really frustrating. Yeah, that is going to be fixed to ISO um, forever. And your drive modes on the left, and your white balance also easy too easy to hit that white balance on the right. White balance is less of a problem because if you're shooting in raw, you can always change that in post. Yeah. Um, but your ISO, I've, I've taken many photos, and it's like, why is the shutter so long? Oh, because it wants to take it in 50 ISO, 50 ISO. not the auto ISO. Bummer. Okay, so that's a shooting experience, which I thought was was great, especially it being lightweight. You, you I mean, again, the old the old adage of the best camera is the one that's with you makes small cameras like this that produce really nice pictures um, pretty compelling. Assuming it takes really nice pictures, we haven't really talked about that. So yet. let's talk about the pictures. Yeah. Uh, let's put up on the screen right now. I, sh- I brought the South by Southwest. And I took okay. a ton of photos using auto ISO. Uh, this is something I just took at home. This is 100 ISO uh, in normal daylight. And uh, if you crop in, uh, we can crop in normal and human. show that it, the image quality is fantastic. Okay. Looks it really does good. save in RAW. It saves in JPEG. Uh, some people have complained about the JPEG compression mm-hmm. uh, in here, and I would agree with them. I would say the JPEG, um, it, if you're going to shoot with this camera, save in RAW. It'll take up more space, buy a larger memory card. Uh, it sucks that when you review the images, you can only review them in JPEG. Uh, 
Mm. Uh, it won't do the raw processing in camera. So if you're um, this kind of person who deletes stuff off the camera as soon as, if you think it's no good, yes. then that's gonna potentially that's a, burn yes, you? Exactly. Okay. Um, and then we moved, that's 100 ISO, and then I took uh, a bunch of other photos. I'm gonna show you one at so 800 ISO. Before we get into all these photos, it's worth saying the the actual photos are on the web, are on tested.com yes. if you wanna come check them out. Um, we realize the weirdness of showing, you know, uh, full frame 24 megapixel images mm -hmm. in 720p video on yeah. YouTube. This is just like so. to give you a sense of what it would look like if you were shown on the web. Yeah. And 800 ISO, great. We'll crop in on this one as well. Um, you can see a little bit of grain starting to pop in. Mm -hmm. it's, it's tough to see because we're showing this over YouTube. But look at the bristles on, the, on that brush yeah, it's, and you can it's see very a little clear. bit of noise there. Yeah. Um, what's the, um, like I know you, you have some like personal in your head limits about yes. what, what ISO you shoot at with different cameras and I know with your NEX well, cameras. Yeah, with the NEX cameras I didn't want to go above like 800 ISO. Okay. And if we move to the next image here, um, this is 3200 ISO at night and it looks Fantastic. Just to be clear, this was this was late at night. This was like ten o'clock. This is late at night. At night. The yeah. only light coming is from the, those those lights in the trees. Um, and if we crop in here, uh, you can definitely see the noise. For example, on the right side, by the, it looks like that where trash can. Where that trash can, where the light is yes, coming where around. The light it, is. Yeah. yeah, the noise is definitely going to be there, but. In that full image, it looked fantastic. I mean, that still looks pretty good. Yeah, it's better than your, definitely better than your phone cam is going to do. Yes. Oh, absolutely. And this, uh, you could not take this photo with a phone camera, this, and it's very comparable to something like the and, Canon 60. And this was what a two f two point eight. This was, uh, I believe, uh, I believe this was f two eight. Okay. Yeah, wide open, um, so very shallow depth of field, mm -hmm. uh, but at thirty two hundred ISO, uh, which I think is the upper limit for good image quality. Okay. At sixty four hundred, things start getting real grainy. Uh, if you're Saying the auto ISO, the 3200 is a good max. So set that as your max. Um, how does the focus work in the low light? Uh, focus works really well. The okay. center focus, especially, because of all those phase tech focus points. They have 117 of those in the center. And so it was really easy to center focus and then just shift the camera and then snap the photo away. There you go. Um, the one photo I did want to show uh, was what happens with the auto ISO, one problem with the auto ISO. And for this one, I'm actually going to switch over back to the live feed um, on this camera. Let's see if you can see the image here. Let's see if we can switch over to the live feed. I'm just impressed at the text on those posters. Like you can you can do a pretty good job reading the text on those posters. So here's a here are two images I took at the the Game of Thrones gallery uh, mm -hmm. at South by Southwest. Uh, I was on auto ISO, and the lighting, even though it was dark because there was uh, spotlighting on these costumes, mm -hmm. uh, it didn't actually need to bump ISO that high. It's shooting at 320 ISO, 320 ISO, um, which is great. It's fine, right? I mean, higher image quality with lower ISO. Mm -hmm. But I would prefer that the camera shoot at a higher shutter speed with the auto ISO. And the camera really likes to do the 1 60th shutter speed. You can see in that in the bottom right there, it's shooting at f2.8 and 160. And 1 60th, while it's not slow for a shutter, mm -hmm. I think it's still too conducive to blur. And I'm going to zoom in. Well, on this, you're right shooting now. something that's not moving. It's not moving, but I might be moving. Mm -hmm. And so this image looked OK, but it was too easy to get like that. Does, it, does this camera do the stuff uh, where it has an accelerometer inside and kind of notes, like it picks the microsecond to fire the shutter when you're not, not really. moving? No. Okay. Um, and That's so kind of a point and shoot trick, I guess. If you're not shooting um, multiple exposures, if you're mm -hmm. not just doing, uh, just holding down continuous shooting, uh, you're, I did find a bunch of instances where I thought I got clear images. I thought I was getting an image like this, but I was mm -hmm. actually getting an image like that. And I couldn't really see with the JPEG reviewing uh, what the image looked like. Well, yeah, and especially on the lower resolution. Yeah, screen. so like it's like the fine detail here. I'm oh. getting stuff like that because it's wanting to shoot at because it's wanting to shoot. If I zoom out at the 160th, and this okay. is ISO 400, it could have easily bumped to ISO 800 and moved to you know one one twentieth of a second. Right. And the image quality would have been great, and I wouldn't have the blurring. But 160th wasn't fast enough, and that's something you can't change for auto ISO the your floor for the shutter speed. So you can set the auto you can set the floor and ceiling for auto ISO, but you can't set the floor and ceiling for shutter speed. Right. Um, I I mean, this is an interesting situation because the traditional. Yeah, you know, your traditional "Hey, I'm a photographer" rule is one thirtieth or one twenty fourth or something is probably the lowest you want to go if you're shooting mm -hmm. by hand ever. Yep. Um, and one sixtieth is the beginning of the sweet spot for that. Yes. Um, and for me, I think one eightieth, I think is a is a good sweet spot. And you can see that with these auto ISOs, ISO is changing. If you look at the lower mm -hmm. right hand corner, 
ISO is definitely changing, but the shutter, it's just sticking that 1 60th. Mm. Loves the 1 60th. And you're, you, had this, you had this set an aperture priority, I assume. Yes, the aperture okay. priority at f2.8. Um, that's, that's interesting. I, I, um, I can totally see that. And especially in the modern world where, you know, your anti-noise, your denoising software is actually quite good. Like, there's no reason you can't shoot at a higher level, remove the grain later, and then, but you can never fix a blurred image because of, mm -hmm. of camera shake. So the other uh, issue I had with this camera was battery life. Okay. Um, what, so, kind of, what, what's battery, what battery does it use? So actually, one of the cool things is that it uses the same battery as the Sony NEX cameras. The Sony the Info Lithium W, It I is believe. the FW50, NPFW50. Yeah. If I pop out the one from these, these are actually the exact same. Hey, exact I have one here same, too. And you have one right there. Yeah, they're everywhere. Yes. Um, Battery is rated for about 340 photos, which is very low. So that's, like, I can take 340 photos on a good day with my yeah, NEX. absolutely. And on a day trip, an event trip, yeah. where I'm going to galleries and walking through an event like South by Southwest, 300 photos is not enough. You'll go through that in no time. And that's if you're not reviewing images, if you're not using the Wi-Fi feature, if you're not mm -hmm. doing a lot of, like, just looking at, if you're not bumping That's the, That's the literally up. just pushing the button, yeah. letting the picture take, and having it on two-second review and moving on. Right, so okay. you want to buy extra batteries. There's actually a, a battery pack you can uh, attach on this. Oh, okay, a little dangle at the grip. bottom. Yeah, it's a big okay. battery grip accessory. Uh, more accessories to buy. Um, but to charge it, it comes with a micro USB cable. Wait, it doesn't that's come with it. a charger? It does not come with a charger. It comes that's, with this thing. Oh, that's, so that's janky. So it's a micro USB. And a, and a wall wart. Um, but if you have an old NEX camera yeah. um, that did come with a charger, you want to use that. For what it's so, worth, when, I, you can buy this when I left my charger in a hotel, I like Sony sells a charger and a spare battery as a kit yeah. now. So, yeah. so you should buy one of those buying. if you have this. If you're getting this camera. Um, but you'll need two batteries for one day of shooting, basically. Okay. One battery was not enough. Um, you know, you mentioned the Wi-Fi stuff. We haven't talked about that yeah, yet. Yeah, so I'm I can, actually, I can actually show you how that works. Um, the best way might not be uh, on the with the live feed. Do you have your phone? I do have my phone. It's all set up here. I actually really like the, the way the Wi-Fi system works. I, a, there are pros and cons. So the other day we were at Adam's shop and I saw you holding the Captain America shield. Yep. In, in the most, like making all sorts of weird poses while holding your phone mm -hmm. behind the shield. And that was a photo oh, yeah, I go. got to take uh, by myself. And you can see that my right hand, left hand, is actually holding my phone, taking the photo, hidden behind the camera, see, behind the shield. If you had asked, I would have been happy to take your picture here. But I want to take my own picture. I, I understand. was experimenting with the Wi-Fi. Uh, but what the Wi-Fi does is you can do a couple things with it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to show you the setup on the menu system right here, uh, on over the shoulder, and um, let's see right here. You can uh, send your photos to your smartphone. So that's the most basic feature. Works like an iFi card, basically. Yep. You can. Um, I'll select it on the smartphone. What happens? It enables the Wi-Fi. And there's a Play Memories app. Okay. Um, and then it has device name and password. And then what's great on Android is that it automatically detects it as iOS a Wi-Fi. iOS 7 stuff does that now, too. And it pops up. And then you get to review all your images. If you want to post it stuff to Instagram the day of, um, you can do that as well. So okay. these are all the photos I took today. And there goes photos taken today. Dumb photos of me. And you can save them at full resolution. You can save, they'll, they'll, you, oh. they'll save, there's a version where you can save it as a two megapixel. So your copy image size can be original, your two megapixel, or your VGA. They'll save just the JPEGs. Okay. Um, I assume you're not pulling off RAW for your smartphone, yeah, right? Yeah, it's just a full JPEG or a, uh, a two megabyte, a new two megapixel size. Very cool. Um, which I, I thought was very nice, very convenient. Um, what, the other thing you can do, though, is you can do remote shooting, which is what I was doing with that Captain America shield. Right. And that actually requires, this is the part that's not great. Uh, while they fix the menu system with, uh, from the NEX series, mm -hmm. um, what they didn't do was fix the application system. So I'm going to show you, there are actually apps on, apps on, this, uh, on this camera. Well, you there mean you things that you can download from the internet and put on the camera, or is it download just Download from them? the internet. You can buy them from the internet. There's an app store. And the app store interface is not great at all. Does the camera connect to your Wi-Fi? Your, like, camera, your, your home Wi-Fi? Home I assume that that was the camera acting as an access point and your phone connecting yes. to it, correct? So to download apps, you connect the camera to your local, your home Wi-Fi okay. or your work Wi-Fi, and you have to type in your Sony username on the phone. That sounds and, great. And, and type in all your you billing on information camera. on the camera. Um, you can't do it on the phone. What I wish is that this Play Memories app will let you configure 
all oh. your, your so you, so yeah, you can download the apps to the phone and then blast and then them over. Blast the them over, connect. or at least blast the authorization that over. Makes a lot more sense. That would make sense, but that doesn't happen. Okay. But what you can do is uh, I, I have two apps here. I have a remote control, which I'll demo real quickly. How much do these apps cost? The remote control one is free. Okay. The uh, time lapse one was ten bucks. Oh wow! Yeah, it was a so little, little hefty. I hope that gives you. Super granular control over the time lapse. It does, and okay. I'll show you that in uh, in one second also. Um, so this is the free remote control app, which is what I was using at Adam's Cave, and you have a live view. It's a little slow. But it is a little slow, but what you can do is you can actually uh, tap to focus, which is cool. It seems like something you'd use for a tripod. Like if you're on a tripod, if you're setting up like the big shot of your family reunion, and you want to be in the picture too, then you put this on the tripod, you aim it, you go back with the camera and you with the app and you keep mashing the button while I mean, I mean right that's yes and, or you and can use it to take pictures of your own mouth that, that's that's what too. you can also do you can yeah. change your settings here um, and it'll save them directly to the camera as you do it okay so I mean, that's neat it's something you know uh, other cameras uh, DSLRs are getting now free seems Wi-Fi. like the right price for that but I, I mean yes. I like it free with my is absolutely the right price yeah. for that. Um, if I go back into the menu system, I'll exit this application. Let me show you how terrible the application uh, list is. Application management, it... Oh! This is Unix, I know this. Let's see. Buying an app. Play Memories camera apps. Searching for the access point. Oh, I actually haven't set it up here. But Lowe is basically a web browser. Oh. I camera. assume that anytime you use Wi-Fi on this camera, you're going to start hitting the battery pretty hard, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, time lapse is the uh, the app I tested and paid for. How, how many apps total are there? Do you think it's like half a dozen? It's okay. not that many. Yeah. And do they, they what what other stuff are there? Like HDR apps? What There's, are the other like fancy image image uh, filters? Filter apps. There's a cinematograph app. Can um, can I take my two thousand dollar full frame camera and make it look like a cheap Russian camera using filters? You can absolutely do that. Great. Uh, the, the 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 okay thing is that. Uh, the NX5R also had apps, and if you bought it on the NX5R, they will transfer over. Okay, so they're attached to an account. Yeah. They, they, at least, at least if you're going to buy apps for your camera, there's no horrible DRM right. thing that means you have to rebuy them for all and your so stuff. So the, this is the app interface on the uh, NX5, and this is uh, this is the uh, the time lapse, and so you can you can do your standard time custom time lapse, and oh, so it, you can set your frame rate, how long the interval. And they have it. Looks like they have presets for they do have presets the for most s- common. Yes. Is there a Michael Mann preset in there? There is no Michael Mann preset. Uh, I'm d- disappointed. There um, you go. I'm gonna get out of this app. Does this give you enough granular control that you could, for example, put the camera on a dolly that has a motor attached to it and move it over a long period of time? You can't step it. You can't. St- you can't do like ramp ups or slowdowns. Oh, bummer. Yeah. You can. Okay. It's not gonna replace something you bought on Kickstarter. Um, does this have an infrared infrared in? Is there a way to connect those types of things to this? Um, I don't Cause think so. Because most of the NEX cameras have infrared. No. So in terms of ports, so you can shoot video with this, like okay. time lapse in case you can shoot video. Uh, it does do 1080p video, okay. have very high bit rate, and it's very nice that uh, on the side here there are uh, jacks for audio in and out. You have a microphone jack and a uh, headphone out. Did you, um, did you try to see if the microphone jack is line level as well, or is it just a mic? It's, a, it's a line level just, as well. Oh, okay. Um, and there's a HDMI uh, out, which we demonstrated, which gives you all the, mm-hmm. uh, the interface. Um, see, there he goes. I, I'm brushing. See that screen turning off? I'm just like... Just getting your hand in the general vicinity. Yep. It's Thanks funny. So. I literally had to rest my glasses on it to get it to turn off when I tried it. Too sensitive, that proximity sensor. Um, Can but, you set it to leave the bottom screen on when you use the viewfinder? You can't. Okay. Yeah, you can't. When you, when, you, when you use this viewfinder, it only switches to that. Same thing with, uh, same thing with the HDMI out. Uh, when you plug the HDMI in, you lose all the images on, on this uh, on, on the, on the right. camera itself. I, I mean, that's fairly normal. Um, um, but that's basically it uh, for this camera. I think that it's seventeen hundred dollars. Yeah. Uh, for the body, there is a kit, a lens that comes with it. Uh, if you want to pay two thousand uh, dollars, that kit lens. So three hundred bucks for the yeah, kit lens. And, or you can buy the kit lens separately for about four hundred bucks on, on websites online. Okay. Um, I like. You said the kit lens is a seventeen forty. It's a twenty eight seventy uh, three five to five six. Um, That's so kind of a slow lens. Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay. But you're going to shoot high ISO anyway with okay. this, so you're okay. going to shoot 1600, 3200 ISO. So the five six doesn't matter all that much. Okay. Um, if you're shooting in daytime, uh, you just don't have that have, as, as much depth of field. But because you're shooting full frame, you can have much better depth of field than you would with your crop sensor. Right, anyway. right, right. So are you? 
I mean, do you think this is a good upgrade for people that bought into NEX and other this, That's cameras? what this camera is. This okay. camera is the upgrade for people who spent $500 two years ago mm -hmm. for an NEX 3 or 5 and want a full-frame camera. Um, Maybe and, and, bought and a lens or two, but not hopefully didn't invest heavily in that yes. ecosystem. There are still too few lenses right now mm -hmm. for this camera system. Five is too few. Um, I think it's, it's a camera that... It was a lot of fun to play with, a lot of fun to rent and use for a month. Mm -hmm. uh, but I wouldn't buy this. If I wanted a pocketable full-frame camera, Sony has an RX1, which is not interchangeable lens, mm -hmm. but it's actually a little smaller than this. How much is the RX1? That's two, around $2,000. Okay. So about the same price with a camera and a lens. Um, but this has no place in my lineup right now. Because you already have a 6G. Because I already have a 6G. I mean, the other benefit of the 6G, of, of buying a full frame from either Nikon or Canon, is that they have a massive lens ecosystem yes. at this point on, on yes. both sides. Which doesn't mean, I mean, you can still put third party lenses on this with adapters, you're just not going to get full functionality. Mm -hmm. And well, Hold on, what does that mean? Does that mean you don't have autofocus? Does that mean you don't, you don't have, have autofocus? Auto your, your peaking is going to work a little weird. Mm -hmm. um, you want lenses with your manual aperture and your manual focus. Um, they work. It just could be a little finicky. You lose a lot of the benefits of having a smart camera like yeah. this by using manual lenses, yeah. though, too. But uh, the image quality is fantastic, I mm -hmm. thought. Uh, the low light image quality is fantastic. Uh, the p I can't emphasize what a difference this being a, basically a pound, a little over a pound, uh, makes. Um, can, I, can I see the difference in weight here? I'm, I'm it, just going to... It is. It's, I mean, this is easily double. I mean, you have a huge lens on this. Yes. But it's easily double. Yeah. 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 And, and going from the Sony A7 back to the 6D, Does this felt burdensome. Old and bulky? Um, it, it felt bulky. Not old, but definitely bulky. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a fun lens. Uh, if you're interested in it, I'd recommend trying it out, finding a place to rent it. Borrow lenses is one place, but you can. there's a bunch of other Probably sites. a camera shop in your, small, in your town, if not. Yep. Yeah. All right, and uh, we'll have more camera stuff, more reviews in the few next uh, weeks and months. It's camera site. season. It is. There's a yeah. lot of good gear out there, and I can't wait to try them all. Uh, so thanks so much, Norm. Uh, we'll have more on Tested soon. Uh, until then, I'll see you guys later. Bye.